All right, the gate was 5.7 million. Attendance was 17,500, it was a sellout. What we did was, it was such a good night. It was a hard night to, we did performance bonuses for Cormier, Roundtree, Pettis, and Costa. So no fight of the night. We just did uh, four performance bonuses. Who's got the first question? Dana, pretty, uh, as you said, pretty entertaining night. Uh, ended with an uh, incredible finish. Can you talk about, I guess, your reaction to watching that fight play out and kind of where you think DC now ranks all time in the yeah. history of UFC? One of, one of the best of all time. Uh, you know, this was, the, this was the right fight for him in that if you think about his career, he steps down from heavyweight to go to light heavyweight because his friend is, is a heavyweight. Um, so he goes to 205, has an incredible career down there, but has that John Jones thing, you know? And uh, John Jones is, in, in my opinion, you know, if not the, one of the greatest of all time. Could, could be the. Um, the potential that John Jones had, who knows what he could have done at heavyweight and everything else. So he's got, he's got the shadow of John Jones. Moves back up to heavyweight and knocks out the best heavyweight ever in UFC history in the first round decisively. Um, I think that what this does is it finally gives him the respect that he deserves. And, uh, you know, he's a two-division two champion. And, you know, now he's got a, a big fight ahead of him. You know, a big, a, big, a big fight, big payday. And it couldn't happen to a better guy. He's an incredible ambassador for the sport. I said a long time ago, I told Daniel, if you're, if you're my champion for the rest of my career, I'm, I'm, I'll be a very happy man. Um, he, he does, he's a great analyst. He does a great job on television. Um, I, I just can't say enough good things about the guy, and I'm really happy for him. I mean, just to get it clear on the record, it seems obvious the Lesnar fight is next for him. You can, you can say that for a fact that is the fight that's being booked. Yeah, well, we're definitely going to make that fight. Um, so Lesnar hit me up a couple days ago and says, uh, sorry I went dark on you, but uh, I had some stuff I had to take care of, and I I'm going to come to the fight this weekend. Okay. See, see you Saturday. You know, he came here tonight. He was all fired up, if you couldn't tell. I mean, right when he got to the, my seat on the side, he was acting like a, like a lunatic. He, he was fired up and excited for this fight. He, his gut told him Stipe because he felt that uh, Cormier put too much weight on for this fight. He thought it was going to affect him. Um, and it didn't. The second half uh, of the year calendar was announced tonight. Uh, is there a date on that calendar that, that makes sense for this fight? I don't know right now. You know, we're still, we, we had this, this night tonight, we got July 28th, and then we can really start working on uh, the end of the year stuff, you know, September, October, November, December. And last thing on this fight, I mean, it's not the fun side to talk about, but it's real. I mean, there's USADA issues, right? I mean, there's time away, there's, you know, pinning it. So, has he been testing? Is he going to be? Can, can, so, what can you tell us? So the process has started. They started the process last week. I don't know where they are in the process, but he's either, he's going to pop up on the on the board here soon, right. Monday or Tuesday or I don't know. I, I don't know where they are in the process. Huh? What do you say? That fighter X wasn't him. There was a, an anonymous fighter at one point that was listed on the USADA roster. I have no idea. Question. And lastly for me, Dan, it was only 48 hours ago, but I want to ask you about Max Holloway. In that 48 hours, have you heard anything no. new, any medical updates? No. We, we've been fo – for, for, first of all, that fight falls out, so we're trying to figure out, you know, get Holloway taken care of to make sure, you know, he's okay. Then, uh, you know, Cormier falls at the press conference on his back. He was hurt. He hurt his, he hurt his leg. He had to go home. It swelled up. He had to ice it, you know. So he iced his leg, and he called me – maybe about midnight one in the morning and said, I'm okay. I feel good. We, I iced my leg and I think I'm going to be okay. I was worried about his back because during this camp, he threw his back out. Yeah. During this camp, he threw his back out and actually didn't train for a minute. And, and I, I think that's probably why he put the weight on too. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm just speculating. You're going to ask him those questions. Um, Can you get that mic? But yeah, so I was, I was more worried to, Think about this, guys. Seriously, think about this. So when we're going, forget the abomination of the heavyweight fight that happened. I mean, the card was so good, you just, yeah, all right, we, we had one bad fight. What are you going to do? But 
when you look at this card, right, and the fights are all, you know, going, Pettis looks better than he's looked. You know, it looked like when he was a champion, that's how he looked tonight. The, you know, the Felder-Perry fight is a war. Those guys are standing toe-to-toe, -to -toe, bleeding all over the place, going at it. Um, you know, Roundtree has the unbelievable knockout. Uh, Costa, the Costa fight is unbelievable. And now imagine we're going to these fights, and you imagine if the, if the, uh, the, the co-main event had stayed in there. Because you know that co-main event would have been ridiculous. And then the main event, it I, I was sitting there seriously going, this might have been the most epic card that we've ever done. And it's hard to say that because we've had so many great cards. But, yeah, it was a good night. It was a good night. I'm happy. Happy it's behind me and ready to move on to July 28th. But good night. Really good night. Dana right here. Yeah. Uh, so you were in the cage, obviously, with Brock. And you mentioned that he was excited after uh, when he was sitting next to you. What did you think of kind of Brock's theatrics? I mean, we've seen Brock in DC on a card before. Uh, they have, you know, they, there is some sort of relationship there. Um, what so, did you think about so that? So they've known a long, uh, each other a long time and the whole wrestling thing. And they talk a lot of shit to each other about wrestling and who would have won in wrestling and who would have done this and that. And I know there's a, you can ask Cormier about it, but th there is a thing with those two on, uh, you know, who would win and now, now they're going to find out. What did you say to him when, when he pushes, uh, you know, when he pushes DC? What were you saying to him in the cage? I said, calm down. Relax. Stop. We get it. There's going to be a fight. Calm down. Yeah, they, they were both fighting. Did you see DC push me up against the cage? And I'm too old for this shit. You can't be doing that to me. And uh, they, they were all fired up. Everybody in there was crazy. Then Cormier's little guy starts running over, pushing Brock and... I'm like, this is about to turn into a shit show that the commission is not going to like. So I just tried to get everybody to chill out. And Awesome. Uh, last question. Paulo Costo, you mentioned he won a, a, a performance bonus tonight. What did you think about his performance? And, and you're going, they released the schedule. You're going to Brazil in September. Is he someone that you could headline a card with yes. in Brazil? Yeah, I think that that kid is the next big Brazilian star. He's on his way. Good looking. Incredible physique and fights like an animal. And... I was also impressed with Uriah Hall. Uriah Hall went out there. Now, the guy that I thought Uriah Hall was going to be at the end of the Ultimate Fighter was the guy that I saw fight tonight. That, that was the guy that I expected him to be after the Ultimate Fighter. He fought an incredible fight tonight. He was in his face. He, he was, uh, you know, every time he'd get hit, he'd punch back with two or three punches, kicks. And it, it was awesome. Great fight. Dana, Brett? Right here. Obviously a, a tough result for Steve Bate, but you mentioned uh, you know, his accomplishments. How would you best encapsulate his, his last two and a half years about and, and what he's done for the heavyweight division? Yeah, it, it, you know, what he's done has been unbelievable. He, he broke the record. Um, and in this fight, when that, when that fight started, uh, you know, these guys went right at each other. They stood in each other's face. Both guys kept pressing forward. Nobody was running, staying away. These guys went in and went toe to toe, um, both getting hit with big shots. And it was all, you know, we, we, when you want to see a great heavyweight championship fight with what was on the line for both guys tonight, you couldn't have wrote it any better th than how they fought. Both of them fought an incredible. I, th I thought that fight was great. Stipe's two and a half years, uh, yeah, awesome. And, and Stipe's not done yet. Stipe's one of the best in the world, and, and um, he'll be back. Dana, do you feel like uh, going into the fight, it might have been better for you had Stipe won the fight, just, you know, you look long term. He's going to be around where DC has a date that he's going to retire. And yet, we say that before the fight, and now after that epic event, you know, here we're talking about a massive pay-per-view that was is going to be one of the biggest you've ever done the, you know the kind of the change so quickly was amazing yeah when, when when we go into fights like this the old me over 13 years ago used to go oh my god we need this guy to win and we need that guy to win i don't even think like that none of that stuff even crosses my mind because you can't can this sport's so crazy you don't know who's going to win and who's not going to win um i thought Saki was going to be the next big you know i thought he was going to be the next big thing you don't know Anything can happen, and, and uh, one thing that I've learned over the years is uh, however it plays out is the way that it was meant to play out, and then we just, we just go from there. 
And I just want to see if you can go into DC a little bit more. What makes him so great? Because you look at him and you say, you know, he doesn't have the great physique like Costa has, and, you know, he doesn't seem like incredibly quick, and, you know, he's a wrestler, not a boxer maybe, but he seems like he does everything well. Like, w can you put your finger on why he is so good? He's such a unique, unique guy, man, in, in every way, shape, and form. He's, he's so articulate. He's a really smart guy. I love the way when he's commentating how he can break down a fight and explain it to you. It's, it's, it's almost like, like Rogan. He's so good. Um, he, he's great at interviewing people. Then you talk about him as a fighter, right? <laughs> yeah, he definitely doesn't look like a, a fighter. Look, 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 looks out of shape, looks heavy, you know. Um, when, when you think about him going in there now with a heavyweight, if you notice in the beginning of the fight, every shot he landed on Stipe was busting Stipe up, both his eyes, his nose. So he's got a lot more power than he gets credit for. Um, you, you know, when he goes in against somebody wrestling, the slam that he had on Dan Henderson, to do that to a guy like Dan Henderson, holy shit. You know, and, and just he's such a well-rounded, incredible human being. Forget about fighter. He's just... I, I, I love Cormier, and I can't say enough good things about him. I know.